Wallahi, and I'll, I'll just end with this. When I was in Mauritania, and I lived with Bedouin, one night we, 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 we were with one of the uh, scholars there. And this is a true story. I have several witnesses to this story. One of them is Ibrahim Osaifo, for people that know him. In, in, uh, but it's, it's a story that some people might find hard to believe. But this is uh, a story that happened to me, so I'm not relating it from a book. We were with one of the scholars and he said, when you get to Ishbil, you might have trouble. And if you do, just go a few uh, hundred meters uh, to your right and you, inshallah you'll find some help. And we left his encampment. When we got to a place called Isbir, our, our truck got um, sunk in the mud because it had been raining. It was pitch dark. And one of the people that I was with, Sheikh Khatri Wadwayba, some, some people know him, he was in California with us. He said, SubhanAllah, Murat Ahmed Fal, there's like kesh from him. He said, if you have trouble at Isbir, then go. And so we did exactly what we said. We came to a Bedouin tent. And there was a Bedouin man there. This was probably about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. He went and he took a uh, sheep and he slaughtered it and cooked it for us. And then it was raining and there was a lot of wind that night. He was holding the rakiza of his tent, you know, the main pillar. When we woke up at Fajr, he was still there holding it. He had spent the whole night <laughs> holding that pillar up because he didn't want it to fall on us. That is karam. And karam and karama are related. Generosity and dignity. And some of the most generous people I've ever experienced in my life are poor people. And, and we do them a grave injustice by not looking to their needs. Jazakumullah <laughs>